Hey, good morning, everyone. Appreciate you all coming in. Honored to see you all here. Thank you. Uh, we are going to be talking about um, maximizing your tax refunds. Are we in the right place? No, that, sorry, bad joke. Bad joke. Um, no, we are talking about trends today, technology trends, um, availability of tools that can make a difference in our business. My name is David Brotherton. I am a 20 group moderator with NIADA, and good to see some friendly faces in here. We have uh, put together a tremendous group of panelists who can comment on technology and its impact on the industry. Uh, I'll introduce these guys briefly and then they can introduce themselves. Um, Joe Neiman from ACV Auctions. And, oh shoot, you know what, you guys do your own. You want us to do our own? Yeah, do your sure. own. Okay. Hi guys, I'm Joe Neiman from ACV Auctions. I'm one of the founders of the company. We started a little over uh, three years ago. We are an online only wholesale dealer to dealer auction. And uh, there's a couple thousand dealerships that are using us every day now to buy their wholesale cars. And uh, really disrupting and changing an industry. So happy to share more about that during this. Thank you. Steve? Hi, my name is Steve Nicholson. I'm the director of major dealer accounts for TradeRev. TradeRev is a digital mobile auction as well. Uh, it was started out in Canada as an appraisal tool, and then it was brought to the States where it was found that, hey, this is a great idea. We can buy and sell on, uh, online, and it's taken off, and I think uh, uh, that's the way of the future. Thank you. George? Hey, good morning. My name is George Verkamp. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Business Development for All Data. Uh, we're the industry's leading provider, cloud-based provider of original OE uh, repair information, unedited. Um, we serve both uh, the mechanical repair market and uh, collision market with somewhere in the neighborhood of, of 80 to 100,000 customers. So happy to be here. All right, thank you. So to get things going, quick show of hands. How many people um, think cars are getting uh, more complicated, more difficult to repair. Anybody? Okay, that's what I thought. I want to start out on the repair side with a question that's tailored for George, but anybody else can weigh in on it as well. Um, George, we are seeing enormous amounts of technology change. Um, it's tough for dealers to keep up. What tools are out there? What can help a dealer stay abreast of what they need to know to keep their, to get their cars running and on the road for the right dollar amount. What, what, can, what can we do? What do we need? And how can we get help? Well, the, the, good news is, the good news is although technology is advancing, um, the average age of the vehicle and certainly the average age of, of, of cars at this group um, is, is responsible for reconditioning and selling uh, is, is getting older from that, from that perspective. Um, so there's, there's kind of two sides of the story. So there's almost 260 million uh, cars on the road. Average age of vehicles is on the rise. It's about 11.5 uh, years. And um, so I, I can speak for all data and certainly there are competitors in the market. Um, we're speaking to both sides of, of that equation. So, um, our information is directly from the OE. It's unedited. Um, that serves a purpose in a couple of different ways. N number one, coming directly from the OEs, um, anybody that's doing that reconditioning, anybody that's doing that repair knows that they're doing it to the exact OE specifications. So that helps in terms of quality, uh, just in terms of what your technicians are doing and what they're doing from a reconditioning perspective. Um, it can also have some implications from a liability perspective. Um, but uh, our relationships with the OEs are, are such, too, that we're also staying out in front of uh, the technology curve. So um, although there's a big bubble of vehicles that are continuing on the road, um, that certainly we have the information to speak to, uh, we're also trying to stay very much ahead of the, of the curve in terms of any, anything you can imagine, autonomous uh, vehicles, um, any, any of those issues that are going to be coming up in the next, really, five to ten years. So, um, you know, our thing is, 
our thing too is, is all about efficiency. Efficiency of quality of information. If we're providing a dealer with tools that allow them to uh, take a look at a vehicle, evaluate its quality quickly, provide the information that's going to address any issues that it has uh, quickly, and allow that dealer to put that, that vehicle in inventory uh, quickly and get it sold. That's what our mission is. So ho hopefully that helps a little bit. Thank you. Hey, this is a panel, folks. So we've got microphones set up on the mic stands. So jump up to the mic. I'll know somebody's got a question if you've, uh, you want to jump up there. Up, oh, we have a taker. Hey, George, what's the difference between the All Data and the All Data Pro? So All Data and All Data Pro. We're, we're going through a, a transition right now uh, between our information products where um, we've got, we've just launched in the last really 12 months a new platform um, which is, uh, which is what we call internally our Generation 3 platform. Um, it's providing us really speed to market with information. Um, more so than our legacy product, our legacy all data product. So what it, what it allows us to do, quite frankly, is it allows us to take information from the OEs um, and very rapidly publish that out to our, uh, to our repair guide. Um, so more so than anybody else in the industry, um, you're getting the most up-to-date information um, in more frequent interval, intervals and more quickly than, than really anybody else. Correct. Okay, quick show of hands. Who's been reluctant to buy a car online? Be, be honest, I'm, my hand's in the air too. I've been really reluctant. So, good, that, that gives us, that's what I expected. There's, there's a reluctance there, and I know from a personal standpoint, my, my reluctance buying cars online was I felt like I couldn't trust the information I had to work with. It was far too, uh, seller beneficial instead of factually beneficial. Um, so could you guys weigh in on what we can expect in 2018 from a inspection quality standpoint, the information that we can rely on? Because I, I think we'd all like to buy cars online, I think, but there's a lot of people afraid to. Gentlemen? Yeah, sure. You want to? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll take first shot at it. Um, so I think, are you alluding to the condition reporting that would allow them to trust the data more to buy online? So I'll, I'll try to take it from a condition reporting standpoint. So really, right now, uh, the condition reporting, I think, is getting ready to make a big leap in quality. And I think the one thing we can all agree on is no matter how good a condition report, let's call it the physical auction, that they do, it's very subjective. And from auction to auction, person to person, even with great training, it can have a little bit of a variance and maybe you think a car that's a four um, and they, they put it as a four and it's really, you look at it and it's a three and a five or a three, three or three and a half. So what we need to try to do in the future, in the near future, is try to take, take that subjectivity out of it and replace it with a data and science method, make it more consistent. And if you look what's coming up here, uh, TradeRev is actually getting ready to launch its H technology. And in November, it's gonna come out in three phases. And in November, the first phase comes out and that's simply, you'll pull up the application, and instead of walking around and taking the pictures of the car like you do now, you actually walk around the car and the application, due to the artificial intelligence, takes all the pictures for you as you walk around and it makes everything consistent and it also shortens the time it takes to do the, uh, the inspection. You do it to the inside of the car, the outside of the car, and then after you're done with that, you go ahead and take your videos, your engine sound, et cetera, videos of the person describing the car, et cetera. So, that's phase one, and in phase two and phase three will be coming out in 2019. I don't have a date for that yet. So phase two is simply taking phase one, but this time the artificial intelligence as you walk around the car will look for things that don't belong there. So if it sees a dent, a scratch, it automatically identifies those and makes you focus in on it, and then you have to describe those individually. The final phase that'll be coming out in phase three is artificial intelligence will actually take that information that was captured in one and two and the dents, et cetera, and the scratches, and it'll go up to like a, a Mitchell guidebook 
or some other matrices that, that the dealerships use, and it will come back and it will, in, in pretty quick time, will actually add a value of what it costs to repair that dent, that scratch. And that's going to allow the dealerships or the buyers, excuse me, the buyers to take that information into consideration and put that into what they feel should be the value of the car. So, and then just to finish it off, I've, I've seen this and I've seen it in action. And what I can tell you is it's so simple that anybody that's never even put a conditional report on a car can be trained extremely quick, can pretty much do it without hardly any instruction. When you got your iPhone, it had hardly any instructions with it and you popped it open and used it. And I think that's where we're going. So that's, that's my part. Joe? Sure. I'm going to back up a step. And um, I assume there's a couple of users in the room that have used either TradeRev or ACV. Uh, I see some nods. So I, I think it's important just to understand that these two companies, I mean, I'll speak to ACV, but we're different than what you've previously witnessed uh, when it comes to buying online. I was a dealer. That's where I cut my teeth. And the way that we uh, really designed ACV was a pro dealer for the dealer, designed by dealer, uh, way to buy and sell inventory. Um, our entire business model is built on trust and transparency. I've personally bought thousands of cars at physical auction, and I swore I would never buy cars online. So the, I, that's, the, that's the honest truth. So I bought one car on OVE for an employee. I always tell this story because he had to have it. Um, I've wasted hundreds and hundreds of hours of my life scrolling through sites like OVE and Smart Auction to try and buy cars for my independent dealership to no avail. Um, and so the mission that we set out on was really to do this right, to do it differently, to remove a lot of excess waste uh, from the ecosystem of all these cars having to be shipped to an auction to sit there for a week before they get run, high fees. So our plan and our mission, and it's working very nicely, is to really empower dealers to know everything about these cars. So the way our, uh, our application works is it's a marketplace. We're selling, it sold about 9,000 cars last month. And it's all the cars are coming from new car dealerships. It's their trade-ins. It's the kind of inventory that buy here, pay here dealerships need. Um, but we also know that in the past, the overwhelming majority of these cars with called like a three to eight thousand dollar ACV, they weren't even getting a CR done at a Mannheim or an Odessa sale. So our CRs are light years ahead of anything that any other um, auction provider is doing. We take like 40 to 50, in some cases 80 photos of each vehicle. It doesn't matter if it's a $200 car or a $200,000 car. They all get the same condition report. All the CR writers, the condition report writers, are our own employees. We train them internally. They're not a third-party contractor. Um, we've empowered them with scan tools. So on every single car, you're getting uh, a full readout of the onboard diagnostics, the OBD2, the present codes, any pending codes. Um, we show you if all the codes have been recently erased or if it had a dead battery. In some states, that's a, you know, a kind of a telltale that there's going to be uh, an issue that's going to pop up. Um, I see more heads nodding. We go around every car with a paint meter. We take 10 undercarriage photos of every car. Before we even start the car, I'm kind of giving away our trade secrets here, but it doesn't matter. Anyone that looks at our app is going to realize it quick on every single car. Before we start it, we're pulling the oil uh, dipstick, taking a photo of that. We pull the oil cap off. Look underneath it if there's sludge, if there's you know milky substance from a potential head gasket leak. We check the coolant. Um, these are all the things that I, as a buyer, used to do at a physical auction if I had the time. And what really started to happen was the auctions, due to safety regulations, would clamp down on these things. There were times where people in yellow vests would come over. I was laying on the blacktop looking underneath the car, <clears throat> risking my life, I'm sure. Uh, but y you have to do that, especially on these lower price point cars, to, to know what you're buying. Um, it got to the point where cars crossing the block, you couldn't open the driver door to look in, you know, look in and check the air conditioning and see if the lights were on the dash. You couldn't pop the hood, you couldn't pull the dipstick, couldn't pull the oil cap. These are all kind of fundamentals in my mind to make a sound buying decision. So this is all the rigor and the work that we do on every single car before you even see it. And then you see it, it comes live, you've got the most thorough condition report. I mean, the, to me, the most fascinating thing is we've kind of rode the wave here of dealers telling us, I have to touch it and feel it, to now dealers tell us that they have a better understanding of the car, they have a better feel of the car on our condition report than they do touching and feeling it at a physical auction. 
Um, and their recon costs are lower on ACV because of this too. So they're passing on cars that otherwise would have been the, uh, you know, the one in 10 where they had a $3,000 recon because they missed something major. On ACV, we're calling all that out so they don't miss those things. Um, so for all those reasons, I think online and a, and a consistent platform is allowing us to outperform what uh, the, the kind of standard benchmark of going to the auction and touching and feeling a car has done. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, Come on up to the mic. <laughs> Thanks. Who's absorbing the cost on the uh, CR for ACV? Sure. So our business model is very simple. Uh, we only make money. We only generate revenue when we sell a car. So the cars come from new car dealerships. Uh, our condition report writers go there. And we list all those cars for free for that dealer. And the only time they're paying us is upon a successful sale. Um, so. For, for a buyer, for everyone in this audience, ACV is completely free application. When you buy a car, there is a buy fee. It's typically about half of what you would see at a physical auction. We process all the title, all the payment, transportation. If you work with a floor plan, we provide all that too. Um, and it's all really streamlined. But we're 100% success-based. Can you... Say, well, someone's going to buy a car from the auction, do you identify where the, the car is located at to kind of reduce your shipping costs? Yeah, so you know the city and state where the car is. You know it's coming from a new car dealership. On every single car that gets listed, there's a guaranteed price quote through, we have our own brokerage called ACV Transportation. So on every single car, let's say you're in Chicago and this car is in Texas, it will tell you that it's going to be $800 to get it to your door and we facilitate all that. And then for the next car, if the next car is in New York State, it'll be you know $600 or whatever it may be. But you know ahead of time, while you're looking at the auction before the auction ends, what to anticipate for transport. Sorry. Yeah, just please weigh uh, on that, Steve. Yeah, just to, to add a little bit to that. And so essentially, Trade wet Rev works very similarly. Um, and, and so again, it's it would be repeating a lot of what he said, but it's the same thing. When you get on, everything's identified. You know what your transportation's cost will be. Um, you know where the seller is because we tell you who the seller is uh, that you're bidding from. Uh, you can do all that research actually even up front. We have what we call an upcoming uh, location and it allows the people, it's 24 hours before they actually go live onto the sale and it allows you to get out there and do that research. And, depend, and then you can go ahead and look at all the condition of the vehicle and determine what the value is and what you want to bid on that. But it also has everything integrated, um, the transportation costs, as he mentioned, uh, financing, all of that is within that. So you've got everything you need all in one application. It's all self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Sir? Yes. Um, so uh, I've had an issue with uh, transportation. So we use Central Dispatch. Uh, because we get better deals than uh, buying the transportation from the auction. But um, I've used one of you three, and uh, they started charging us almost immediately for storage. Uh, didn't even have a chance to get the, the transporter there, and we were already starting to get storage charges. Uh, the, other, the other question I had is regarding the condition report. Uh, does anybody actually run the engine, drive the car, shift the yeah. shift through the gears on your condition report? And if we receive a vehicle that's not that the condition report was not accurate, uh, is there any recourse? Great questions. Those are great questions. Uh, so to the first part, I don't think that was our platform because we don't start we don't charge any storage fees uh, for for cars sitting on a lot. We've also, we've gotten to the point where we're, our transportation brokerage is moving over half the cars uh, for our dealers. It's not really a profit center, our transportation arm of the company. It's really just to provide uh, these cars getting to you as quickly as possible. Um, so with that being said, you know, we have more control. We're able to facilitate the need better. Um, we don't make much money in transport. We often lose, uh, but the goal is just to get you your car. So as far as comparable to other shipping rates on like Central Dispatch, we should be in line with that. It shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be a premium to ship with ACV Transport. Uh, to the other part of your question, uh, we start and 
run and drive the car as much as we can around the lot. We don't take them out on the road. Um, so typically what we try and do is get them to shift kind of first to second gear. Uh, and, you know, we probably have the car running for the duration of the inspection, which is about 20 minutes long. We know our risk. We're okay with the risk of, um, you know, transmissions at high speed, drive axle at high speed, making noise or anything like that. We do check the four-wheel drive if it's a four-wheel drive vehicle. Um, but every car that we sell, we stand behind. And over 90% of the cars on ACV are now run green light, which is a seven-day protection period on that car. And we're just rolling out now where you can buy up to 14 or 21 days worth of coverage for kind of like a... PSI type equivalent um, uh, type product, so you can have even more coverage. Um, but yeah, I mean, we we know our risk there. We're okay with it. And if you call us and say that the car, you know, it turns out that the transmission slips at 40 miles an hour, we have arbitration. We're going to make it right one way or another, or buy the car back. Steve. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, sorry. Uh, so you asked the question, and I think the first part, which he addressed, was: Do we start the engine? Do we run it? Do we test it? We do. We do all the same. The, I would say that when you get on Trade Rev and you look at it and you look at the condition reporting, the one thing you'll find that we have is we have videos. So not only do we take the pictures, but then we take the videos, not only the inside of the car, maybe the the, the convertible top going up and down, but we also start the engine walk around, look at the engine, listen to the sound of the engine. It allows you to actually listen to the engine before you actually purchase the vehicle. So you get an idea of, is there any sounds in there? Maybe some, some warnings as well as we take the pictures of the warning lights on the dash, um, any codes that would come up, we show those as well with the scanners. Uh, you talked about um, the, the time of the transportation a little bit. You mentioned that. I can tell you that right now I know our transportation, we use, um, so Trade Rev is owned by Car Auction Services, and they also own their own transportation company, which is called Cars Arrive. So we use that as a primary delivery method to get the cars where they need to go. And right now, the average time to get, we call it the cycle time, from the time you purchase the vehicle to the time it hits your lot, right now we're averaging about five days. So the transportation is becoming very reliable and much more consistent than it used to be. Um, as far as guaranteeing and standing behind the cars, we are right now, um, we are testing and we are considering uh, how we're going to go next, but we are looking at something called trade ready. And basically, you get the car, it, it isn't what you wanted, you get to send it back. So we're looking at all those methods as well. Yeah. Sir. This question is uh, specifically regarding trade rev. Currently, your platform has a representation of the vehicle, videos, uh, dis written description, pictures, everything like that. I know that I've bought from uh, rep you know the, the person that's representing the vehicle a lot of times is someone from the actual dealership, some sort of used car manager, et cetera. But then someone else said that you also have employees that do it. Uh, obviously, the uh, the intentions can be a little bit, or the motivations can be a little bit different between those individuals. Is there a way that if you're going to continue to do it that way that I can differentiate exactly who is representing the car? Yeah, um, you're talking about whether a trade rev employee actually did it versus an employee on the lot? Exactly. Okay, yeah. So again, I mentioned this earlier in the H technology, and so one of, again, one of the methods so right now, I guess the answer is we do not have it on the website whether the employee did it from Trade Rev or whether the person did it from the lot. I'll just say that right now. But again, let's go back to what I said earlier and was a bit long-winded, but that's why we're trying to introduce the, the H technology. We're trying to take all that uncertainty out of the reconditioning to make them far more reliable and take that subjectivity away. We're trying to let the, you know, the, the AI take over and try to get rid of all that subjectivity and all those human errors and hiding things. So it'll become more standard, and that way, hopefully, it eliminates a lot of things you're talking about. Is, uh, is there a, the, a certain lowest price point? I believe the gentleman on the left-hand side said that the three to $8,000 range cars is, is typical probably for your business model. I'm curious, you know, I, I sell my ACV might be uh, 2,500 or 3,500. Is there a certain limit of a car that where your fees and the transportation might make the deal like you'd want to buy at your local auction versus through one of your services? <clears throat> See if I'm understanding this right. I, I, 
Our fees, our buy fees range from 50 to $350. Uh, they cap at a $15,000 car. If you're in that kind of price point that you're talking about, your buy fee should be about half of what it is at a physical auction. I know they vary, um, and physical auctions tend to vary lane by lane even, depending on the seller. Physical auctions, the way they run their accounting, um, they have to make a certain net per transaction. So let's call it six or $800. So if they're giving a high volume seller a break, they're passing that on to the buyers. Um, we don't have any of that. Uh, to your point though, really with ACV, you can buy cars really nationwide. We're currently, we started in Buffalo, New York. Uh, we're now Maine, down to Florida, out through Texas, and up through Chicago, so we're pushing west. Uh, again, we sold about 9,000 cars last month. Um, you can look as far as you want, or you can look as localized as you want, it's up to you. What, what we found, which is pretty fascinating, is with ACV, buyers, even on these lower dollar cars, $2,500, $3,000 cars, buyers are buying those cars from three and 400 miles away, which obviously there's an incurred transportation cost. Um, roughly a dollar a mile is kind of your typical wholesale transport rate. Um, but what I, what I generally preach and, and advise is that if, if the car makes sense, like you know everything up front, right? So if it's a $3,000 car on ACV and that's what you can win the car for, and it's another 100 or so for uh, a buy fee and it's another 300 for the transport, so you have 3,400 in the car. If that makes sense to you, then that's a sound buying decision. Um, but no one's forcing you to, to look further out. I advise it, and, and what we found is, you know, me being a local, let's say, used car dealer in, in Buffalo, New York, previously it wouldn't really make sense for me to spend days out of the office driving to different auctions around. With ACV though, or, you know, or trade rev, right? You, it's just it, right, it's just in the palm of your hand. Um, and you can gain access to cars in Pennsylvania and New Jersey and Michigan. And again, it, it's all, you're empowered. If it makes sense to, to you with the transport cost, then you should pull the trigger and buy it. Absolutely. Yeah, it keeps you, you know, when I had my dealership, I was spread thin. I was at auctions three days a week. I was retailing about 50 cars a month. And what I found is when I'm not at the office, the productivity of the retail and recon goes down. So with ACV, it keeps, you know, it would have, if I had this, if I was empowered with this tool, it would have kept me at the office. I could buy cars, you know, seven days a week on ACV. I can be on vacation and buy a couple cars. It's not hard to do. It's actually fun to do. Um, and if I had an appetite for, say, 15 cars a week, instead of having to try and cram that all in in a couple days, you kind of spread it out throughout every day. It only ends up being two or three cars a day. It's really pretty manageable. Yeah, you're, um, you brought up a really interesting point. So again, a little room survey. Use you as an example. You're looking for a $2,500 to $3,500 car. Um, how often have you gone to the sale and there was nothing? And how many times has there been one car and it got bid up just stupid? <laughs> what you're paying for with online auctions is information and access and efficiency. Yeah, Would that, you guys agree with that? I, I do, and, and to kind of go by Joe, what Joe was talking about earlier, you know, it's the same thing. So we're coast to coast, and then you, you had mentioned earlier the transportation and Joe's math was great. So the greatest thing about, I think, the online auctions in general, just to take for all of us here, is the ability now that you now have access to vehicles that you, you previously did not. So it, you know, I think the stats that I have or the math that I have is, is slightly different, but the average physical auction has got about a 200 mile reach, where right now we're averaging at about a 500 mile reach on average. So it allows you, and I'll give you a, the best example. Yesterday, somebody came up to the booth and said, I'm from Texas. I sell a lot of trucks, I can't find enough trucks. So I use these online digital mobile auctions to help me find access to the inventory that I've never been able to get access to. And one thing that they, they're smart enough to do is they said, well, we're from Texas and we noticed there's an arbitration or an arbitrage opportunity so you can buy cars from the Northeast. The Northeast tends to be maybe a little bit rougher here and there, but if the car is priced right and it's a lot cheaper typically in that Northeast area, it'll more than offset the transportation cost. 
Not to mention, you know, you have to always keep a lookout for transportation opportunities. So I'll just give you an example, and it's, it's a bit of a plug, but right now, for example, when you go out there, there's always some transportation opportunities. So right now, uh, depending on that, so I gave you the example of the, the person in Texas wanting to buy from the Northeast, that's over 1,000 miles, right? But that's got a flat rate right now of $600 at Trade Rev. So, and if it's 500 to 1,000 miles, it's 300. And if anything below 500, it's 150. So you go with what Joe is talking about, and it is, you simply do the math, you know the value of the car, you take a look at that condition, you know what you gotta do to the car, you put all the math behind it, and then you go from there. If it makes sense, do it. Establishing an account or whatever with one of you guys, is that the same as it would be at the local auction, submit a check, do like a little background. Uh, you know, I've never used any online buying before that, you know, kind of guess why I'm here. So is it is it difficult to get on your app and get qualified, I guess? It, it's not. Um, is it okay? Go ahead. All right. So it's not. It's actually very easy and it only takes a few minutes. Um, well, it takes a few minutes to get the paperwork and everything done. And then, so you need a few things. You need your auction access ID, your tax forms, avoid a check. We'll need a, way, a method of payment, et cetera, to set you all up. We'll walk you through it. We'll do the actual setup for you, and then there'll be a quick background check. Um, I, I, I th we set somebody up in LA a couple weeks ago, and we, we told them conservatively it would be, you know, I think, 36, 48 hours, and we were having lunch, and it came through, and it said they were set up. So it's pretty quick. Real, yeah, I mean, similar. No, no background checks. We're not uh, an auction access member, um, but if you come by our booth, we can have you operational in about five minutes. Um, we, at the last, I'm trying to think, it was, it was the last uh, NABD show that we did in Vegas. Um, we signed somebody up and they bought a car that afternoon. So, yeah, we can have you up and going. Okay. Sir? Uh, so this is a follow-up question on the transport. So you said you have a seven-day guarantee of the condition report, but with central dispatch, what I find is usually I post something, it takes maybe a day, maybe two days for somebody to actually call me and say, hey, I can transport the vehicle. Then they're gonna pick it up a day or two days later and maybe deliver it to me three days later. By the time I get to the vehicle, it's already past your seven day uh, condition report. And Yeah, so I'm, I'm really glad you asked that because there's probably a lot of other people thinking the same thing. Um, our average transport time when for ACV transportation is also in that five day window on average. Some do take longer if they're going you know, from a real rural area or, or to a rural area. Um, in any case, it is a standard seven days. If you use our transportation, it gives us visibility and we're working directly with that transporter. We will always give you an additional two days. So worst case scenario, it takes us 10 days to drop that car off. You also have day 11 and 12. So that's only if I'm using your services. Yes. Yeah, because the, the reality is if you use your own, we don't gain, we don't have good visibility. And it's not to say you're a bad guy or the next one is. We just need to be, you know, in that, um, in that transportation transaction. So, but again, our transportation, and I know trade revs, well, I'm guessing trade revs as well with the, with the promotions that they do. Neither of us are in business to make money on transport. We're in the transport business to get the cars to you as quickly as possible and, and keep you buying the car. So don't think that our rates are exorbitant compared to what you're able to accomplish on central dispatch. They should be right in line. Okay. Uh, what about anybody else regarding this policy? I, I, can you repeat what the policy is? Because uh, I think it was directed for, ACV. For backing up the condition report versus transport time. The condition report versus transport time. So. ACV says that they have a seven day uh, period that they back up their condition report, meaning that the condition report says nothing about a knocking engine and uh -huh. I have a knocking engine when I receive the vehicle. Sure, so uh -huh. the, the best way I can put that is we have an arbitration policy in place. So the vehicle comes, it goes, they, you, the condition report's done on it, they walk around, they do everything and they tell you, for example, that the car is in great shape, et cetera, or I'll give you a good example. If the vehicle is an as is and is above $2,500 and it shows up and you get it and the car doesn't run, it doesn't do what it said, and they had something in their description that says, fantastic car. Um, you have two days from the time it arrives from the transport from cars arrive to look at it, say, wait, this isn't what we, 
we bargained for and you can immediately go into the arbitration because the person was misleading. See, I like this because it's, it doesn't even just cover you from a monetary standpoint, you know, the, and, and AAA standards. And I think, we, like, we go beyond the AAA standards. It's $400 uh, per panel and then after $800 and it's arbitratable. But this even allows you the protection from the person actually described it as something it wasn't. It was a misrepresentation so you can go in and go after them. So that way you would call the arbitration and say, I've got a problem, and then arbitration would take over, and you have two days to do that, and then you, have, um, you can take it to any NAAA, uh, NAAA auction. It doesn't even have to be an Odessa auction because we're owned by Car Auction Services. So I wanted you to know that it doesn't have to be that. You could take it to a franchise dealer. You can have them take a look at it, give us the proof and the evidence you need, and then send it to us, and then we'll start dealing with it. I see. Thank you. Questions? Okay, I'll go back to my list. That works. Um, let's talk about the research angle. And the uh, question's kind of twofold. One, I think is pretty obvious, the importance in general of research. Um, but I want to flip that one just a hair, and I hope I'm not surprising you guys, but I want to talk about limitations because I want to try and manage expectations. I think what you guys do is fantastic. I think it, it, it is one, going to be secret sauce going forward. But let's talk about the importance of good information and research and its limitations. Steve, you want to lead off? Because Joe's very loquacious, so we'll <laughs> let Steve start. He's, he looks like he's itching about it. So, <laughs> you know, research really, I think, is one of the most important aspects that a dealer has in order to manage his inventory. So the best thing I can tell you is you want to take as much time up front to research your, your inventory that's getting ready to go for sale. So I don't, I, I can't speak for ACV, I'm, I'm not as familiar as the operation, but from a trade rev standpoint, I know that we have an upcoming sale, or actually, even further than that, we actually have schedules which tells you the dealers that are getting ready to go up for sale and then they have an upcoming, which is a 24 hour period, which allows you to go out there, review the car, search for the car, um, and, and, and determine what you think the car is worth. Then you can actually go out and look at wholesale prices, retail prices, and then determine what you wanna pay for that car, right? So that is a, a way to do research up front and advanced. There is, there is that limitation that you only have that up front in advance and a lot of times you can't go out and touch that car. And that's why you're, you're gonna have to rely on the quality of the inspection that's being placed in front of you. Um, I will tell you that I believe that in our industry now, our industry, I think that it's superior to the, to the actual auction itself and the physical auction. How many times do you roll up at the physical auction, it's going across the block, and Joe even said it himself, he had to lay down in front of cars, right? This way, it's, you're safe, you're not gonna get crushed, you got some time, some lead time to go ahead and do that research and try, instead of trying to make your decision in a two minute period or a 10 second period as that thing's crossing the block and he's rolling across the numbers and trying to make you decide right away whether you're gonna buy it or not. Joe? Yeah. I'll try and keep it short. I know I'm not good at that. Okay, so, um, you know, great points. Um, when I think about research, I, I look to results, and that's what our dealers that use ACV and rely on ACV are doing. So you guys are familiar with JD By Rider. There might be some JD By Rider franchisees in this audience. I don't know. Uh, what, what they shared with us uh, was, was really earth-shattering in our world. So we know we do a good condition report, and we pride ourselves on that, and... There, 98% of our condition reports are all done by our own employees. Um, there's a small percentage of sellers who use our tool as a live appraisal tool. So if a Bentley is getting traded in a Ford store, they are empowered to go and walk that car and do a condition report and list it. Um, it's apparent that, you know, and, it, and it's, as it's designated to, to know whether it's one of our inspectors or uh, a seller listing the car themselves. But that said, the, the overwhelming majority are listed by our own employees who we train. Um, and what JD Byrider shared with us is they're buying hundreds and hundreds of cars a month from us for their 26 corporately owned stores, buy here, pay here stores. And they keep an internal scorecard uh, on reconditioning expenses and expected reconditioning expenses. 
And ACV was far and away the most consistent when it came to recon and the lowest cost when it came to recon against physical auctions, against other online auctions. So what they've done is they started by dabbling, and this is what I would encourage everybody to do. Try it, right? Buy a couple. Pay attention to your reconditioning expenses. Pay attention to your all-in cost on these cars. Track them. Um, and pay attention to your inventory turn time and uh, your, your gross profit on these cars. Because depending on the marketplace that you find to be the most profitable and easy to do business with and presents the least amount of surprises, that's where you should double down and continue to buy more cars. So JD Byrider went from buying, you know, call it five or 10 cars a month to now they're buying hundreds of cars a month on ACV. Um, and it's, it's their own data. It's nothing that we gave them. It's their own data and research that's saying that this is proving to be uh, a, a better, more cost-effective and safer marketplace for them to acquire their inventory. And now I'm hearing it from more and more dealers, and we actually use it as a sales, I call it sales, but uh, maybe relationship builder approach. Because um, we've got, the only thing we have to lose is if, if we find or if that dealer finds they're doing better that, you know, for their business by going to a physical auction, then they should keep doing that. Um, but every single time they're doing better with ACV, so it kind of naturally uh, brings that dealer further into doing business with ACV. There was a second part to that question, wasn't there? Yes, limitations. I don't think there are any, quite honestly. Um, we're selling $200 cars, we sell $200,000 cars. Uh, ACV is growing between three and 400% a year. So uh, we'll sell about 100,000 cars this year. We started in 2000, halfway through 2015, and I sold the first $2,000 Mazda Tribute myself off a of Honda lot. Uh, so just the exponential growth that we're experiencing um, is, is solely due because it, it, it's just due to the fact that dealers are embracing this and it's working on both sides. So it's great for sellers, it's also great for buyers. Um, I think as we continue to expand west, which we're doing this year, uh, and we're gonna continue to do over the next couple years to really build out the whole United States, uh, you'll just see that marketplaces like ACV are going to be where more and more of these cars are going to be transacting. And in a lot of our markets where we're selling, you know, 700 plus cars, what happens is those cars used to go to the physical auction, and now those physical auctions are like kind of ghost towns. And so if you're still relying on going to that physical auction and you're not looking on ACV, which is completely free to have access to, you're picking up the scraps. The good cars, whether that means they were priced right or whether it means it was better quality inventory, have already been sold and you don't even get to see them. So it's kind of a zero-sum game and you really got to have your eyes and ears open to, to know where these cars are, are transacting because otherwise you're just going to miss out on the good inventory. Thank you, gentlemen. George, I have a different question for you. All right, shoot. I actually would like to hear a little bit more about your third gen product. And are there any plans to maybe integrate some of the all data platform with some DMS systems? Is that something that could be on the horizon? Could be on the horizon. I'll, I'll just I'll touch on our Gen 3 platform just a, a little bit more. As, as I mentioned before, um, the new platform is just new technology. It allows us uh, to provide a product that is easier to use. Um, we talked a little bit about research. Um, you can identify um, you know, a repair procedure just that much more quickly um, <clears throat> today in our Gen 3 product. I, I just talked about the, the information flow in terms of the information that's coming directly from the OE and how quickly we get that, uh, get that information into the product, uh, whether that's in a late model situation or whether it's something that the OEs have identified in an older model vehicle um, that, you know, updates the repair procedure. So a lot of flexibility that that, that platform provides us. Um, so, hey, just a show of hands, how many, how many dealers in here are doing their own reconditioning on site? Okay, so, so most. Um, and again, I would just tell you that our Gen 3 platform, uh, as well as we continue to develop it, is going to continue to enhance that, that speed and efficiency piece that I talked about. So um, 
you know, inventory acquisition is a full-time job, as we acknowledge, whether you're going to the physical auction, whether you're buying online. Um, it's an ongoing process for all of you so that you're getting the best quality uh, inventory you can find or you've found that niche car or that niche price point that you're looking for. Um, you know, ultimately what, what you know, we encourage dealers to do is, is take that acquisition uh, piece of the puzzle and then plug it into your workflow. And hopefully we're providing tools that allow you to get that vehicle um, into your workflow in the cloud, whether you're standing in an auction or whether you're at your desk, um, get that vehicle into a, a work order cadence, um, understand what the VIN is. We're even working on some, some data analytics that will ultimately tell you the total cost of ownership. Um, if it's a 2009 Camry that's got 90,000 miles on it, right? Even though the condition report looks fantastic, right? Y you know that when it clicks 92,000 miles, it's gonna need the water pump uh, replaced because we have that big data information uh, uh, source to, to provide those insights. Um, so anything that we can do, again, just from a research standpoint, from a time and efficiency standpoint, those are all the things that we're trying to help facilitate uh, for dealers after that acquisition piece is, is made. And, and again, back to our new platform, it just allows us uh, to be able to do that and expand the capabilities going forward uh, for dealers. All right, I would like to thank all of you gentlemen for your participation, your time, your eloquence. Thank you all very much.